Now, subawards. Subawards are very, any, anybody has, have subawards? Okay, we have one or two. All right, when you have subawards, it is very, very, very important that you guys are aware of certain things. When you're doing a subaward, does the subawardee the sub have the resources for one to even do the work that you want them to do? And when I say that, that, that involves the PI that, that, that's involved at the subawardee, the institution itself, do they have the, the infrastructure to con conduct what you need done? And they have to be aware that all the policies and procedures and the federal requirements that you as the prime awardee is responsible for, guess what? They are just as much responsible. So it's, it's, it's a flow down situation. So all the rules and regulations that you guys have to follow, they have to follow and they have to comply with as well. If so, say, let's say the subaward doesn't perform or does something illegal. Let's, let's go that route. If NSF comes out to your institution and you're the prime, meaning you, you're, you're, you're here and the sub is here, and the sub award did something wrong, we don't go after the sub awarding. We go after the prime, meaning you. So that's why I'm saying it's very, very important, you guys, that you are aware of what your subawardees are doing. That means make sure that you are out doing site visits with them, telephone calls, web conferences, emails. Make sure you are on top because that is your responsibility because you set that, that agreement up. And that's the whole part. Is it risk, you know, when you're doing this subaward agreement, did you do a risk-based analysis? Did you check and see, how, were they okay? Did they, did they have an audit? Were there any audit findings? If so, were they reconciled? Think, these are the things that, you know, as, as new PIs and you're getting into this, and you're, because this is, will not be your last award. This is just one of many to come. So this is something that you just need to start thinking about when you're in this, 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 this community. And make sure, I think I, oh yeah, we talked about it, uh, making sure that, like I said, they're in compliance with everything. I, we've had situations where I found some PIs were debarred and suspended. Make sure you check that. And I'm gonna give you a, ch a chance to see that. But when you're doing it, make sure that it is cost effective, you know, one subawardee might give you a great presentation, but another subawardee can do the exact same job for the same amount or if not cheaper. Make sure you are balancing that out. Make sure that you're doing a proper price analysis when you're creating a subaward agreement. Okay. And I was just mentioning the flow down provisions. These are all the things that, that you as awardees are responsible for. And the cost principles that everyone in, under here goes under is the 2 CFR uh, 220, which is the old A21. And that's the, basically the cost principles that keeps, that tells you what's allowable and what's unallowable. So the conflict of interest, free drug-free zone, uh, human, uh, human subjects, all the things that David has already spoke about, these are all the things that the subaward is now responsible for as well. So when they, when you guys get that award, there should be some kind of policy, some kind of uh, tutorial that, that you, you go through with your subawardee saying this is what is required of you as well. Because you don't want them to be in violation of, God forbid, an IRB or animal, or what have you, uh, situation or assurance, and they violate something. And because it's under your watch now, because now they're your responsibility. Okay, uh, and when you're doing this, make sure, like I said, uh, that the grades that you're applying are appropriate. Make sure that they are not debarred. And this website right here is epls.gov, and that stands for the Excluded Party List System. And basically, what this does, you can put in anyone's name and their institution, and if it comes up, no matches found. Guess what? You're okay. But if it comes back and you get an alert, 
you might want to stop <laughs> because they've done something wrong. And you do not want to do business. You do not want to have a subaward with a PI, a researcher that has been debarred. You're not going to get any money from any federal agency. So make sure you check this and use this at your disposal. This is something that you can check for every person, a PI, co-PI related to a grant. And that's the beauty of it. It is free and it's there for your, I use it every day because if everybody in here has been checked, okay? You wouldn't have the award if I didn't check. Because that's a part of my review. I have to make sure everyone in this audience is okay. Well, at the time that it was awarded. Now, if you did anything <laughs> beside after that, I don't know. But at the point that you got the award, you were all right. And, that's, and so use that for, even for your sub-awardees. Make sure that they are on the tight and narrow ship. You want to make sure, because these dollars are so important. And when it comes to NSF funding, you know, we, we want to make sure, for one, we spend all our money. And we want to make sure we get great results out of that money that we invest into the community. The last thing we want is money given back to us. Because those, those dollars go back to the Treasury. It doesn't go back to NSF. If something goes wrong, it goes back to the Department of Treasury and we lose that money. So it's very important when we spend this and give you this money, we want you to use it and use it appropriately, okay? All right. Um, and like I was saying earlier, Make sure when you're asking about your subawardees, ask if they have an A133 audit. And, and make sure if, they, if they've done one in the last few years, what was the findings? As the prime awardee, you are allowed to get this information. I've had a situation where a grantee says, the subawardee will not give me their A133. And I, I quickly tell them they're in violation. So you can, you can do two things, you can, either, you can cancel, and terminate that and start somewhere. But always talk with your program officer because these things happen. Uh, and it's amazing how, how much of a, a power struggle sometimes when it gets with a subaward and the prime. It becomes this, this, this war of the minds. And it can get very, very uh, testy, to say, to say the least. And sometimes they don't want to tell you everything. But the beauty is, as the prime, you are allowed to get that information. And even with the point of reporting, I think they've probably already talked about this, when, it, when it's time to get certain things from your subawardees, make sure that you get them in advance. Because you'll be amazed if you have a subaward and you, your, your progress report is due, nine times out of 10, usually, guess what happens? The subaward did not submit what you needed to submit to the NSF, and guess what, now you're late. So make sure you create a, additional deadlines ahead of the NSF deadlines for your subawardees because if they will delay you sometimes. So you wanna make sure that you, you, you give them a few, few heads up on certain reporting requirements so you can get what you need to submit to the foundation in a timely manner. Okay. And so, like I was saying, what we do is award monitoring and business assistance, okay? Those site visits we do are, for, for one, I enjoy them immensely, because I get to, for one, I get to meet you guys, I get to see what's going on, I get to see the science behind everything, I get to see basically the fruits of what I do every day, but I get to see it. I get to see the students. So it's very, it's very, very um, valuable not only from the business side, but just from the, science, the scientific side. So I enjoy going out and, and meeting you guys. And with these site visits, they are here to help you. Please, 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 if you get a call saying we want to come out and visit, please do not panic. Like I said, it's not an audit. I am not an auditor, not my background. So when we come out there, we really just want you to be candid. If something's not working, if something isn't right, if there's things that you haven't been able to accomplish because there is some kind of disconnect between you and the Office of Sponsored Research, or you let us know, we, we can be that bridge to get things accomplished. 
And that's why it's so important. And then when we do go out there, if we find something, it's okay. It's okay, it's not the end of the world. We'll make a recommendation. Most, some, some recommendations we might make on a Thursday, by the time we're ready to leave on Friday, they have already cleared it up and ready to go. And that's, that's the beauty of it. And, and you have us for a whole five days. So, you know, we have situations where we're only gonna talk about one particular grant at the time. But feel free to ask about anything NSF related because you have us. You have this resource at your disposal. So use us when we're there. And it really, really helps. And you know, if you want, if you need help with policies, if you have issues or concerns about, well, what's, what, would, what would you think would be, we're, that's what we're here for. We bounce a lot of ideas off while we're there. So we ask for a lot of information, but you get a lot of feedback. You get a lot of great information that, is, that I think is just priceless. And it really, really works. So we are about to go back out on the road. So starting in December, so I don't know exactly who's on the list. I don't know where I'm going. You might see me, I'm just saying. Uh, but if you do, it's okay. You already know who I am, so it's not, it's not a bad thing. Okay. And so with, the, with these things that we do, this is pretty much how everything happens. Uh, we go through, this is pretty much the background of how we even get to that point. So we do a risk assessment. And basically, how, how do you get on the list? You get on the list by certain things. It can be a dollar amount. It can be what you actually have in the actual budget, budget line. So key things that will target, target a, a site visit. Large dollar of monies in participant support. Large monies in subaward. Large monies in salaries. Things of that nature. New awardee. Uh, let's see what else. There's, there's, this, there's a, like a list and then basically what happens, there's this lottery system that pops up. So you hit the lottery. Most people are not happy when you hit the lottery, but, but this is a good one, it really is. And like I said, we do 30, we do 30 a year. And some of them are virtual, so we may not actually come out to you, we might just do a web conference. And sometimes we'll say, okay, we're gonna go out. Like, so if you're in South Dakota, we're not coming out to see you in the middle of winter. So we're not going to North Dakota. So certain things, so we, we it's a really deep, strategy that we do, but we do try to make sure we go out and see everybody, so. All right, so these are all the things that David, I know have already talked about. We talked about carryover funds and things of that nature. Do not, do not, do not co-mingle funds. That's, please do not co-mingle any federal funds with another award, another grant, and say, okay, well, this is somewhat related, so let's just put a few thousand, don't do it. Don't do it, illegal, illegal. Uh, and make sure if you, if you have carryover, address it in your progress report. Make sure you say that. Okay, another reminders we already talked about. Uh, if you're gonna rebudget, that's fine. You can rebudget without NSF prior approval. Make sure when you're doing that rebudget that it, it sounds that it's allowable, all, uh, allowable and reasonable, okay? And if you have any questions, by all means, always ask your sponsor research office, okay? We already talked about this. Um, and this is so important. Make sure you get your reports in on time. It will delay everything. And it is, you'll be amazed how many phone calls I get, especially at the end of the fiscal year. Oh, well, where's my award? And I'm saying, well, there's an overdue report. Well, I'm not even on that of report. Well, guess what? Your, your co-PI is on another award. You need to contact, and this is, the, this is what happens. And nothing, I, I, it could be really minor things that you may want to get done, like a change in PI, things of that nature. Nothing, the whole, everything stops. And it is so important. And then we'll get, oh, well, the, I submitted it, submitting, and getting approved are two different things. Just because you submit the, pro the progress report does not mean it's been approved. You submitted it. Now it's up for Dave or any other NSF program officer to approve it. Once it's approved, then you're okay. But until that point, it's still deemed overdue. Okay. Let's see what else. 
Record retention, make sure you keep proper bookkeeping like with anything, if you have a business, just make sure that you keep your records and files must be maintained three years from the final progress report. Please acknowledge any non-NSF dollars, any funds contributing to the project. We wanna make sure who else in the federal government is actually contributing to the project. And please keep separate records. Make, and, and if you hear me, I keep saying keep records, records, records. Documentation, document, document, document. Because that's what will keep you out of trouble. So, keys to success. This is pretty much the blueprint, and I, I say this all the time. Know your requirements, read your solicitations. If you have any questions about your solicitation, contact your program officer. Make sure you understand what is being required of you in the solicitation. Make sure you keep good business practices. Make sure you have that system in place. Make sure you are focused on the goals and objectives of the project. Make sure you're staying on target. If you get off course, that's what we're here for. If there's a problem, a concern, something's not working, what you said in the proposal, that's okay. That's what David's there for. That's what I'm here for. That it happens, but be up front. Do not sit here and just twiddle your thumbs and get frustrated because you don't know what else to do. That's what we're here for, okay? Document, 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 okay? Make sure that you acknowledge NSF if you're gonna do any kind of web, web development, things of that nature. Acknowledge us, we like that kind of stuff. We're kind of attention hungry on that kind of thing. And as always, ask early, ask often. I, I promise you, if you ask questions, we'll give you an answer. If I don't know it, I will find an answer for you. And that's it.